to see you again, Mark. Um, so <laughs> close to Christmas as well. I didn't think it would be me this Friday. So happy Christmas. Um, Same to you, Pop. Thank you. I guess as ever, if we can start with your team news and more in particular, last week we talked about Tino going for an assessment. Have you managed to get an update on Tino at all? Yeah, Tino had uh, surgery, which is unfortunate, Louis. Um, and like you said before, he worked very, very hard in the training camp in Spain and he was probably in the best condition he's been in since he's been at the club. Um, and it's really, we're really, really down about it that he's had this injury, first and foremost for him and his family. Um, and we've tried to support him as best we can. And he's obviously down back in London with Chelsea and they'll be looking after him as his parent club. Is, is there a time frame on it, Mark? And and with the the window next month, will it be a case of Chelsea actually recalling Tino or will he still be on loan at Huddersfield Town per se? Lee Bromby will deal with that in regards to what happens with recalls and stuff. All we're okay. trying to do is support him as best we can at the moment and we're wishing him a, a speedy recovery, but it looks like it's going to be a lengthy injury. Okay. Um, David Kasumu had a swollen Achilles, didn't he, ahead of the Watford game. How's David getting on? Yeah, David's been David's done great uh, for me since I've come in the door. He's a very, very energetic player. He's all action and... He's one that the fans like, you know, he loves a tackle and uh, he plays with real spirit and determination. He's just had a, a slight problem with his Achilles. It's been quite inflamed and he's not been moving as good as he'd like to have been in the past weeks. Um, however, it seems to have uh, calmed down and uh, he had a good session yesterday with the group. Will he be in contention then for Boxing Day? Yeah, I think he will be in contention. Good news. Um we know that it's a little bit still more long term with the likes of Matty Pearson and people like that. I bet Matty's chomping at the bit to get back playing, isn't he? Yeah, he's chomping at the bit. We're all uh, looking at him doing parts of the session, the warm ups, and we're just, as a staff, really hoping to welcome him back into the group. And uh, he's a big player and a big leader. Um, and any team in this league would miss him, you know. And, and we're we're going to welcome him back. Um, and he, he's on he's on a good way, you know. How do, how do you manage a player like that when they're on a comeback and especially when we know that they, they're so eager to get back in the side? Yeah, listen, it's tough, you know. He's got a real strong mentality. You could see it, everything he does is with intensity. Um, so the medical staff have been brilliant with him um, and he's ahead of schedule already and it's a real testament to his style and his professionalism. He's a very disciplined boy as well, you know. Um, and uh, the, the group have missed him, there's no doubt about it. Dwayne Holmes missed out and obviously you spoke to Oggy after the Watford game, how you left him out. You maybe wanted to see a little bit more from Dwayne to get back into the side. In in recent weeks, you had praised his impact. So how difficult is it for you, Mark, when you, you do leave a player out who you have praised in recent weeks? Listen, that's the, the thing about being a head coach. You know, you've got a squad there that you've got to utilise. And as I said, we've had uh, some issues in the offensive areas where we're trying to find a balance. But what I would say is that Dwayne's trained really well the last few days and uh, I, I firmly believe you'll be back in contention at the weekend. So I was going to say, you've guessing on that, you've seen a reaction then from him this week. Yeah, listen, he's no doubt and Dwayne's got massive quality in the final third. And as I said, we, we just tried to find a balance there, you know, as a staff. And this is stuff that we discussed together, you know, and we're looking to go out there and, and exploit the weaknesses of the opposition as well. Um, but as I said, um, to touch on it again, Dwayne's trained really well the past few days and he showed the real energy to his training, which has been pleasing. We'll be speaking to Etienne Kamara shortly. Obviously, we know he's one of your young players, obviously moved over to West Yorkshire, but he's had such a good run in the side, Mark. Not not just given the the difficulty in, in the run of results recently, but the fact he's moved over here, he's, he's going a long way establishing himself in your side. Just how impressed have you been with Etienne? Absolutely impressed. Um, there's absolutely no doubt he's gathering a lot of attention. After every game, almost every manager's touched on how impressed they've been with him when he's been in the start of living, and he's growing, you know. What we've got to be careful is with young players that, we use them when we can and when we could surround them with the right experience. It's important and that's what Hoggy does in there. He takes care of these young players, you know, with his presence and his leadership. So we're very fortunate with the, the type of characters in the group. Yeah, how much of a help is that to you? Massive help, you know. Hoggy's your, your brain out there on the pitch alongside your Tom Lees and the way they go about their business is incredible, you know. They play with real determination 
and people forget Hoggy's been out for a long time. You know, he's still finding his rhythm and his fitness. And we'll have to manage him well. And for the young lads like Kamara and Diara to have someone of that presence there is great for them. How easy or hard is it, Mark? Because we, you know, we watched the Watford game and and as you quite rightly said, you, your side probably deserved more from that game than, than what you got. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. But based on that, how do you go about keeping the spirits up during the week? Yeah, listen, the Watford game, it was um, we performed very well in the first half. Um, and I know that due to that performance, the fans were right behind us. And then, of course, when we took the soccer punch goal in the second half on the transition, you could see that the stadium went a little bit deflated. And I reiterated to the players that you have to show a reaction then. You know, you've got to keep going to the final whistle and roll your sleeves up and show determination and spirit. Um, and then the last goal was a set play, so it's fine margins. But we knew after World Cup break that it was going to be two hard games against two teams that are in the top four. And now it's the business end of the season. We're now starting to play all the teams around about us. And we're also moving to the January transfer window. There's been no real issue to try and keep the spirits high because the guys train with real intensity. And uh, if they didn't, they wouldn't be able to perform the way they did in the first half and especially in the second half against Sheffield. The real frustration for me is that I've not been able to bring our uh, great fan base the, these points in the last two games, but we're working very hard on the training ground to improve the performances overall so that we could do it for longer periods in the game and we need to kill teams off so that we could come away with these three points because it's massive for us at this moment. When it comes to, you know, killing teams off, taking those chances, creating those chances, is there anything that you've started to do differently on the training field to influence that? No, not at all. We train the same way uh, all the time, you know, and uh, the guys are very clear on what we want to do. And you could see the way we were shifting the ball around in the first half. You know, a lot of the movements are movements that come from the training ground. But as I've touched on before, it's just when we'll come in that final third, we probably lack a little bit of impetus and a spark. Um, but as I said, it's against two top teams in the top four in the league. And uh, when we start to face the teams around about us, I'm sure we're going to be more aggressive in the areas. Yeah, we'll come on to that in just a moment. It's interesting though with Preston, isn't it? Obviously, Huddersfield Town have played them twice already this season. Um, you're going to play them on Boxing Day, then again in the FA Cup in the new year. Does that change any way you prepare for a match when you, you've kind of got to know this opponent already? No, not at all. You know, we know Preston are a very settled team. They've got a good manager there who's doing a great job and they've got aspirations to get promoted to the Premier League. There's no doubt about it. You could see that with the personnel that they've brought in there. Um, however, we know that we're capable of causing uh, any team problems in this league and we've showed that in periods against two teams in the top four of the last two weeks, you know. Uh, and as I said, in terms of the forward areas, I'm not worried about it because I know that these guys have got the numbers uh, and they'll start firing and the, the tide will soon turn. Yeah, lots been made about Preston's defensive record this season. I guess when we talk about putting teams away and putting those chances away, that's going to be even more vital against a side like Preston, who we know don't give a lot of chances away. Yeah, absolutely. Difficult game, you know, but mm -hmm. we know what this league's are about. There's a lot of difficult games. Everybody's very competitive. And it's all about starting up there on the front foot and showing a good reaction to the weekend and building on the foundations that were, were laid after a good performance there and especially the first half of the weekend. And looking at the fixture list, as you touched on, Rotherham, Luton, Hull, Blackpool, all to come between now and the end of January. Do you have one eye on those games, Mark? Because as you say, if you can pick up points around those teams, then that'll be a real boost. Of course, I've got an eye on those games, Louis. You know, that's when we'll change the whole picture of our season. Um, and we've got to come into these games full of belief and desire. And then, as I said, when you get on a run of wins, you change the picture of the whole season, you know, and you bring a real confidence back to the, the, the fans and everything like that. So it's massive that we start well in this period. Christmas time as well. We know, getting to know you, Mark, you're a family man and, and you're down in West Yorkshire with us. How does Mark Fotheringham juggle the pressure of this job, but also a little bit of family time at Christmas. Louis, look, it's no pressure for me, you know, like, I think you are all, everybody's clever in the media, you know what I've been through the past four years, like, I'm a 39-year-old coach who's been in the last four years, four playoff finals in Germany, which is four of the biggest games in German football, it's one of the biggest leagues in the world, 
I've done it in every league. I've got enough experience to handle this situation. I'm absolutely thriving at the moment in the challenge. I'm facing it head on with my players and I've got a brilliant group here. What I've got here at this club is an amazing support network from Lee Bromby, Dave Baldwin and all the staff. And they're supporting me really well. And as I said, after the World Cup break, to play two teams in the top four has been difficult. But what I am is I'm very pleased with the way the guys performed overall. And if we could keep their performance levels high and cut out the naivety and transitions, uh, I'm absolutely sure that we're going to cause these teams problems around about us in the league. Hey, can you afford yourself any downtime over the Christmas period, Mark? Listen, it's very hard, you know. You know I'm a guy that's 24-7 football. Um, but what I, what I have got is I've got three little terrorists there in the house, an eight-year-old, a five-year-old and a one-year-old. And uh, they don't give you a chance to think, you know. And, of course, they're all excited about Christmas as well. Um, and uh, you all know I'm a real family man and uh, I love spending time with them. And, of course, Christmas is an exciting period for the boys. So I'll be looking forward to spending it with the family. But my main focus is Preston. Huddersfield town kits and the stockings. Yeah, the brookie sort of the salt with the Huddersfield kits. So uh, they'll be running around Scotland with their kits on and showing everybody, you know. Uh, and when we start winning games and climbing this table, there'll be no prouder moment to see my boys walking around with their kits on, guys. You know, it's the best feeling in the world. That's what we like to hear. Just lastly, Mark, obviously Christmas time, some people say it's a time of reflection. If, if you just look back on the last few months for you at Huddersfield Town, how would you assess it? Listen, it's been amazing. Um, it's been an incredible experience. Um, I really believe that I've brought a real impetus to the club again uh, from a real tough start to the season. We've actually gave the fans some hope and the respect that we've won games and we've won it with a massive injury list. And all these players are starting to come slowly but surely back and they're getting their cell rhythm and they're getting up to match speed and, and gaining match fitness. And what I will say as well is that we're coming into the January window as well, which is important. Um, and we know that we're about to face all the teams around about us in the league. And I really believe there's a confidence of this group that could change the picture of where we're lying in the table very quickly. We all know we've got a game in hand as well. And all these teams above us know because they analyse us and they see the performances that we're putting in. Top stuff, Mark. Well, best of luck for Boxing Day and happy Christmas to you and your family. Happy Christmas, Lee. Thank you very much. Top man. Top man. Cheers, boy. Stephen. Hey, Steve. You mentioned those six pointers coming up. Pre Preston doesn't really fall into that category, though, does it? I mean, what are you expecting from them? We know Preston's a really strong team. You know, they're a settled team. They've got a good manager there, and they're a club that's got aspirations to go up every season. Um, and we know that they're defensively solid. Um, however, we know on our day we are very competitive, and we've shown that in the last two games against, as I've said before, two teams that are in the top four. Um, and we've performed very well uh, in large periods of the game, but we just need to show a little bit more experience in these situations and not conceding the goals that we had, you know? Yeah. I mean, it is... Um, you mentioned that the, in the final third, the difficulties that you've had. Obviously, Sheffield United, Watford are some of the better teams defensively in the division, um, but the lack of goals does extend back before that. Are you still confident that that will turn around soon? Yeah, listen, there was a, someone mentioned the stat to me at the weekend about the goals, but when I look back, we scored two against QPR and we'd scored goals before that as well. I've not got any issues with that. I know that the strikers I've got here can score goals and they've got good numbers, but I've said before I would like goals to come from all areas of the pitch. We need to be, uh, as I said, a little bit more disciplined in regards to set plays because we are, we are up there, one of the highest teams in the league in regards to our performance in that. And we've got good delivery and we're very dangerous in, in that regard, you know. Um, so it's just about getting goals from overall areas in the team. It is seven goals, uh, seven, seven out of nine you've not scored in, though. Is, it, is that not a concern? Um, well, I, I, I don't really look too far ahead or too far back, Steve, you know. I focus on, before we come into the break, Josh Ruffers scored two good goals. 
were coming in good areas, were, were maybe just showing a lack of composure at times. However, as I said, the pleasing thing for me is we're coming in good areas and we're looking dangerous on the counter-attack and we're working the ball well into these uh, dangerous areas in the last third. And as I said, I've got no issues of support the guys there in the final third. They're all good players and they've got great quality and they've shown it in the past, you know. Yeah, how, how is it? How do you go about trying to get that out of them now? As you mentioned, you know, Jack Radoni into double figures last year, Danny Ward double figures, Jordan Rhodes we know is doing well. How do you get that out of them here? Yeah, you just got to keep uh, working with them in the training, supporting them, working on their movements, their striker movement, working on the link play, you know, how we connect the ball into these areas. And as I said, Jack Radoni he showed. Uh, many aspects of his game now that he could play in many positions and he's, he's very flexible in that regard. And as I said, when Jack scores one, I think he'll just go on a run there. Is there a bit of, you mentioned you've got a, you do have players with flexibility. Um, is there a balance to be struck between trying to find some consistency for these players and also try, trying different things to try and see if you can find something that works? Yeah, you're bang on. It's been very tough to find consistency due to the injury list. Um, the injury list has been massive since I've arrived in here. And uh, a lot of the creative players as well, like you've touched on earlier with Tino Anurin and young Pat Jones and players like that, I've never heard them from day one, you know, but the guys that have played in the, these areas, they've shown a real willingness and desire. And uh, I know that they'll come good, you know, and they've just got to keep working hard, showing that real determination and uh, that they're showing in the training. And uh, as I said, we're not going to be playing against the two teams from the top four every week. It is a, a really pivotal time you're moving into now with those six pointers, isn't it? It's there would still be work to do, even if you get a good return on those. But it could be a bit of a disaster if if they don't go your way. It's really important, isn't it? Yeah, listen, it's. I mean, like I'm looking at it myself and saying there's half the season to go, you know. So. Um, we've won games in a period where we had uh, an absolutely drastic uh, injury list and I feel when we get our squad back and we're more rounded as a group and if we could do things in the transfer window it would be great um, just to give the guys a little lift and as I said, um, we half of the season to go, you know, I'm, I'm so positive and optimistic and I really, as a head coach, I'm facing this challenge head on. And as I've said before, I've got massive experience in this uh, area. I've been involved in four uh, playoff finals in Germany and all the leagues from League 3 right up until Bundesliga with massive pressure. And I'm used to this situation and I'm facing it head on with my players. You mentioned January there. Is it last week you mentioned there isn't much finance to work with or zero finance to work with? Is it a case of moving players out would then allow you to bring players in? Yeah, Steve, you know what it's like uh, all the clubs in the league, you know, everyone's always looking to do business in January. Um, and as I said, I'm really fortunate that I've got a great support network here and with Dave Baldwin and Lee Bromby. And I think it's a little case of just staying in your lane, you know, you've got to let these guys who are the experts deal with this month. And uh, that's what they're getting paid to do from the club. And, and they're doing a great job, you know, and uh, if we could do anything, I think it would be good. Is there any particular positions that you're you're after? Yeah, of course, we've been having the discussions and, and stuff, but um, at this moment, Steve, I'm just focused on our players that we have at the moment because they're good players and they've been working really hard. And as I've said before, it's been fine margins, you know. One goal we lost against probably Watford, the best offensive four in the league with Saar and Joe Pedro, and then Joe Pedro scored a great set play goal from a, a corner. So, in my opinion, we're not far off. We've just got to keep working hard, show discipline in what we're doing, and uh, all these six-pointers are coming our way, and it's going to be a really exciting time for the club, and I'm absolutely looking forward to this. One of the bright sparks, I thought, on the weekend was Tari Simpson came on, offered a, a bit of something different. Is he in contention, or is he still someone that you're going to need to phase into the side? Yeah, Tyrese has been doing really well. Um, he's, he's, he's doing ever so well in training as well. Um, the issue with Tyrese is that he's been out for such a long period that he's got to build his fitness levels up and get himself up to match speed and also get his uh, rhythm back. But he's shown a real desire and he plays with real intensity when he comes on and he's got real physicality about him, you know, what defenders hate. Uh, if I was a centre-back in the league, I certainly wouldn't like to be facing Tyrese Simpson week in, week out, especially when he's up to speed and he's firing. 
And in this moment, he showed showed real impact when he when he's come off, uh, come on the pitch. He just needs to obviously tidy up and and get his rhythm back. Uh, yeah, uh, and you've got you mentioned you got to set David Kasumi back. You've got Jonathan Hogg. You've got Etienne Kamara. There's a lot of options there in that centre midfield. Yeah, listen, the midfield area has been really strong. You know, I was analysing it with my staff last week, and I've got. Jack Radoni, who's absolutely running all over the top, Ollie Marwood in the, in the second half. That's a guy that's been at the elite level for the past eight years between championship and premiership. And people forget Jack Radoni was in a team that got relegated from League One to League Two last season. You know, he's come on so well. He's come on leaps and bounds. Um, and the likes of Kasuma as well, they're really thriving on the challenge and they're doing really well at the moment. And we've just got to keep working with them. You know, that's what we are as a club. That's the type of players that we're bringing the building. And it's all about coaching them, working with them, giving them support. And we need to win as many games as we can along the way and building for the future. This is it, isn't it? I think sometimes we forget that players will improve over time. We get an idea of them in our heads. But you're looking to improve these players. And hopefully, you know, the like Jack Rodoni's had half a season of the championship now, which he didn't have before. Do you feel like that is going to stand him in good stead going into the second half of the season? Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's becoming more settled. But it's not just him, you know. You could look at, well, Boyle as well. Boyle was playing at Cheltenham. Um, and Slavin Bilic even commented on Boyle at the weekend to me after the game and said, what a fantastic player. Really composed in ball possession. Something that not a lot of people spoke about, Boyle. Um, and he's just a top professional. He's got a fantastic character. And when you look throughout the squad and you look at these guys, we're improving them as a staff, which is really positive. But collective, collectively, we've got to win games. And that's what we're all about, you know. I said it before after the weekend, I would actually take an ugly win, probably similar to what we did at QPR away. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm go home and make these fans that we've got all happy over the Christmas period because that's what it's all about. That's why we're in football, to win games for that feeling, to get that adrenaline to make our fans proud of us and to make them go home feeling really proud to support this great club. Fantastic. Tough for me. Thanks, Mark. Liam? Hiya, Mark. You OK? Leon, how are you doing? You in the yeah, living room today? No, not so bad. I'm, I'm batting on, batting on. I, I was just, you know, just sort of wondering, obviously, you know, with results and the position of the table, supporters are, you know, a little, a little bit upset. And I suppose as a, as a coach, your staff and a coach, you have to take broad shoulders and, and, and take the sort of, he he, you feel like it's sort of part of your job, even though you've been, you know, you've been very, very unlucky in some of the performances as well. It's just not going for you, but I suppose you have to take it, don't you? You have to take a bit of stick. Yeah, listen, guys, I know get... that. You know, that's the nature of the beast. That's why I come into this job and I face, face it head on. And you could all see I've got bright shoulder shoulders. I kick every ball on the sideline. I play yeah, with a real yeah. passion. And um, Billich commented that on after the game as well. He says, "Listen, you're you've got massive presence there. You were." Series of annoying me in the first half because your team performed really well. When yeah. we go through your team and we look at the personnel, you know, compared to what we've got, we've dominated them there. But like you said, we probably deflated our fan base there at the weekend in the stadium because we played so well yeah. for the first period of the game and then we just took a sucker punch, you know. And I want our guys to push on at that period, even when they go 1-0 down in the games, to keep showing desire and spirit, which our club deserves. Um However, what I would say is that if you go over the period of the years that Huddersfield had a great season last year, but if you look at the first period when Carlos Cordoban come in here, there was a few results in there, like 6-0 yeah. at Norwich, 5-2 at Blackburn. Um, Bournemouth was a tragic result as well. And yeah. Guys, I've not had any results like that. Every game I've been involved in has been competitive. And yeah. what I would say is I never had Louis O'Brien's and tough lows in that in my team. I've got guys that are developing, young players, in yeah. the group as well and I've got lads that are uh, improving as we go yeah. and as I said that's where we are at a, as a club at the moment and I'm really uh, happy with them and satisfied but I need to turn these performances and improvement yeah. into wins that's the main thing and like yeah. I touched on again I don't even mind if we win the games ugly you know yeah. I just want to get the wins You're not getting obviously much luck as a group you've had injuries this start and deal there and fine margins you must feel a bit it's like us against the world a little bit, isn't it, really? You know, yeah. yeah, listen, you've got to create that siege mentality in the group as well. Um, they're a good group. They work so hard in the training. Yeah. And uh, when you discuss things after them with the, the reviews and stuff, they're so open and honest. And they show real honesty in everything they do. 
Um, and I know yeah. that it's a long season. Guys, we've got half a season to go. Half a season. If we could yeah. win games in the period with the injury list we, could, we had, what would happen when everybody's back fit? We're going to win games. We've got to realise we'll come yeah. off the back of winning at QPR and then we had a good strong draw against Swansea who are a, a good footballing team in yeah. the league that we could have win, won and then we've had two disappointing results against two teams in the top four. However, we're about to play all the teams around about us now and this is the business end of the season. Yeah. For yourself, do you remember what you were doing last last Christmas? I mean, you've been, you'll been you be in the thick of it over Christmas, holiday crowds and were you sort of at, at the football last year? How did it work? Listen, uh, the last period I was in would probably be in Hertha of Berlin. And when you talk about experience, I was probably going to try and win games against uh, teams that have got 80,000 fans in the stadium. And I had a stadium with probably 75 to 80,000 every week demanding that we were winning games. So there couldn't have been any better situations to prepare me for this. With all respect, we've got a, a brilliant fan base, but there's no 80,000 there cheering you on every week, you know. We've yeah. got an amazing crowd. When we're going well, it feels like we've got even more than what we've got in the stadium because the fans are so passionate and they've got every right to vent their frustrations because they know that this team's capable of winning more games than we had. And yeah. I promise you now, we will win more games. No doubt about yeah. it, guys. Yeah. I would just ask you finally, have you got one or two... Loan recalls on some players in January, the likes of the, the, the Scott High and one or two others. Are you are you sort of looking at things? Yeah, listen, for me at the moment, you know how quick the games are coming. My main focus is yeah. preparing yeah. the team and getting them in the right mood to go into these games in the calendar. In regards to all that stuff, Lee Bromby deals with that. That's his responsibility and he does yeah. it really well. Um, so my main focus with the staff is making sure we're at it and, and ready going into these games. Yeah. Anything else with that, we could talk about later, but... Yeah, very best of luck, Mark. Hope you and uh, you, you lads get a break because you deserve yeah. it. Have a great Christmas, Paul. Thank you very much. Anything from yourself, Ian? Yeah, just a quick one, Mark. How are you, how are you doing? Yeah, not bad, thank you. You okay? Yeah, great, Paul. Good stuff. Just a quick one. You mentioned uh, the words from uh, Slav and Bilic earlier, the words of encouragement and yes. so on. I know you want points, not kind words, but how yeah. valuable is it to hear that kind of support from fellow managers for what Listen, when he come in at the end of the game, he was very uh you know Slavin, he's a real character. And he just come in, I was sitting with Lee Bromby, Kenny Muller and my agent in the, the room with Slavin staff, and he just said, Listen, you're a big young manager. Now I understand why everybody's talking about you in Germany. Massive presence, he says, to play that way you did against us. And the first half was incredible. When we look at your squad and compare it to ours, he said the way you pressed us, the way you moved as a unit was very good. And we relied on our offensive players to make the difference for us. But that's what uh, the budgets of the Premier League could get you, you know. But we're no moaning or complaining about it because we believe in our group. And as I said, it balances itself out over the course of the season. And we've got to improve and grow together as a group We've got a lot of players that are stepping up from leagues below and they're growing as a team and they're getting used to each other and we've got a lot of players coming back from injury. I would rather Slavin come in and said that it was absolutely crap and I had three points, you know. But of yeah. course it's encouraging, you know. But guys, like I said, it doesn't matter to me, you know. I've been around the big names in world football. I'm in the, the office where I'm working at clubs constantly over the past three, four years and I couldn't have had any more experience working with these guys. And as I said, I had a massive input in these clubs doing well. So I need to bring that and transport it to our great club. And I'm doing everything I can and my capabilities to make it happen. Have you had any uh, any messages of support or conversations with Felix Magatha and so on? Uh, any of those are the guys you've worked with, you know, to give you a bit of advice at, at this yeah, time? Yeah, listen, you, you know what it's like. These guys know the way I am as well. They know I'm a winner and they know I'll be unsatisfied the way we're sitting in the table. But the reality is these people that have been at that level as well, they know how hard this league is. They know how, how unforgiving it is. And they know that the finances that the Premier League clubs have got when they come out of the Premier League, what they could go and buy in the transfer window. And we unfortunately find ourselves in a situation that we can't do that, but we could improve, we could grow as a group. And we've got to start winning games quick. And I'm sure that we're going to do it. I believe in them. That's great. Thanks, Mark. And all the best. Have a great Christmas. Yeah, thank you very much.